Hey, welcome back to the channel. Have you seen the price of outdoor furniture? Have you even seen outdoor furniture? Hard to find nowadays, and when you do, it's not normally the price you want, it's definitely not the style you want, and it probably doesn't fit the space that you want. I'm gonna show you how to make your own two by four outdoor end tables for under 50 bucks. Let's start another project. So we're working on the furniture side of the smokehouse. Obviously, if you've not seen the smokehouse video, I'll put a link at the top of the screen here. But it's basically holds my smoker. We've got TV speakers and all that good stuff. It's a great place to hang out, especially after six o'clock when the sun's no longer in the sitting area. Um, in the early mornings too, it's really nice. Right now, it's about one o'clock in the afternoon and the sun's really bright in that spot. It's pretty warm right now, so it's not somewhere you wanna sit. What I wanna do is I wanna build two end tables, one on each side of the couch, I think they're going to be roughly 20 inches by 16 inches, both of them. I'm going to make them out of uh, 2x4 material, pine, just regular stud grade pine. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to stain them black. So I'll have a little bit of transparency with the stain, but not much. I want them black because I think it will match the outfit of the room pretty well. And it will match the couch roll too. Let's go get the saws out and let's get to work. all the measurements in the description that way you know exactly what lengths I am but right now I'm gonna cut four legs uh, the legs will be two by four material uh, they'll be 20 and a half inches I'll put an inch and a half topper on top of the coffee table so give me a total height of 22 inches the width will be 16 wide the length will be 20 inches deep so let's get to work start cutting this stuff Cut these two by six 17 inch spacers. Let's cut the two by twos, they have to be nine inches. Four two by twos, which are one and a half by one and a half inches. Okay, since my table is actually 16, the rough dimension is 16 inches wide, I'm gonna make my top overhang one inch on both sides. Let's go set these top boards, the top table of the boards at 18 inches long, one inch on each side. Let's cut those real quick. Quick pro tip. Never trust the cut from the factory. It's always wrong or crooked. Always make that first cut to clean up that end. That way you know you're starting with a straight edge. Okay, here's all my cut for my first table. I'm gonna do this again here in a second. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stain these real quick. And I'm gonna cut the pieces from the other side that way I have time for these to dry, so when I get done cutting the other pieces, I should be able to assemble, hopefully. It's dry enough, pretty hot day, so I should be all right. So real quick, let's review. Here's my legs, there's four of them. I think they're 20 and a half inches long. Here's my spacers in between my legs. These are 17 inches long. And here's my smaller spacers in between both legs, and those are nine inches long. These are actually 18 inches long to the tabletop be the width of the top of the table. Obviously, I need to sand all this down and clean it all up. When it comes to the stain, it's real simple. I'm gonna give them a light coated black stain. The reason why, because everything I butt together will have that stain on it. And then what I'll do is uh, I'll come back with a second coat on important parts that are visible after the table's been assembled and make sure I get all the spots that maybe didn't get as good as I wanted. So anyways, this will be a quick uh, stain just to get all the joints for the most part. The entire, all the boards, but then I'll go back later and touch them up and make them look better.
Okay, I've got the first end table all stained up black. I kind of like it dirty like that, like uh, not totally, almost where you can see through. It's a solid stain, but I do like how the little bit of the grain's coming through and then also the, the pine color coming through. So I may just leave it like that. I may hit the tabletop maybe once more with stain to give it you know extra protection from water and stuff. But I think I'm gonna leave it as is. I like that dirty, chalky look. So one's done, one's done. It is hot. Uh, it's only 80 degrees, 83 degrees here in Indiana, but it is hot, especially in the sun on the asphalt, uh, staining black stains. So uh, definitely smoked me a little bit. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, um, pro tip, take your wet paintbrush, instead of rinsing it off and storing it away till you're ready to go again, put it in a bag. Make sure the bag is airtight, like that. And the thing will stay nice and wet the entire time. You'll never have to clean it. I've done it for like weeks. I actually forgot about paint brushes weeks later and they were still wet on the tips and I didn't ruin my brush. So quick little pro tip. I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other one real quick and then I'm gonna move those off. Those should be ready to be assembled as soon as I get the other one stained. So I'm gonna try and keep everything going and keep me going. I wanna be done by later tonight, at least with most of it. So I need to get moving. Sit back, enjoy the ride. Okay, I've got the uh, second end table all cut up. I got my tops, I got my spacers, I got my legs, I got my little spacers, all good to go. Uh, so this is my scrap out of the two end tables I did right here. This is all I have out of all the cuts I just made with both end tables. So both end tables took me two, took two two by fours and four two by sixes to do both end tables. Not bad material. That sucked. It's hot. Um, should have known better than painting on asphalt. It's always hotter on asphalt, but I didn't want to get the grass all steamy and stuff like I did last time. So anyways, uh, it's done. So I'm happy about that. I'm gonna let it sit for a little while. I'm gonna go chill inside, cool down a little bit. <sighs> Woo. Well, I thought I was done with the saw and the stain and I just re realized, I just realized that I forgot to cut one piece. It's the bottom piece in the center uh, for the lower part of the coffee table or the end tables. So I gotta cut two 17 inch two by sixes and stain them real quick. Okay, let's go ahead and put one together here. I've got all my pieces here. I've got my, uh, actually my one piece over there is still drying the one 17 inch piece. I had to think five of these 17s, two by six by 17s because um, I used them to brace the, the legs and stuff, but then I also used one in the very bottom to run a rail down there. So long story short, I'll show you that here in a minute. So let's go ahead and build this real quick. It's real simple. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the leg on the two by six such as this on both sides. Okay, that's gonna leave a little reveal right here for the one by material. So let me do that real quick. Um, using these types of screws for this project. Hopefully they won't split the wood. They're really narrow um, They got a good little head on them. So they should work good, but I'm hoping I don't have to split or pre-drill the uh, the opening there, so Key here is just make sure everything's nice and straight Yeah, those drive really nice, just let you know, and, and they're not going to split the wood. They're a little bit expensive. Pretty simple. Let me put the other side on.
Okay, here's the top now. I just gotta put the bottom on. Bottom, I'm gonna be off the ground, probably about the inch, uh, about the height of this right here, an inch and a half. So, what you can do is uh, you can actually use another one of these, put it down here at the bottom, and then what we'll do is put this in here like this, and then we'll screw that top one. Okay, here's the leg section. Now I gotta do what? Three more just like it. slide in here like this obviously it looks like I'm gonna have to cut down that middle board right there because one of these ain't gonna fit so then this piece goes here like this too and what I'll do is I'll screw into here I'll probably put liquid nails in that too because that's a pretty sensitive joint I'm making sure I use the rounded part on the outside I think it'll look better This, this will go here like this, but I'm gonna pre drill or pre screw. I do need to uh, see what this is right here, this measurement. Let me get a tape measure. I'm about to rip that one down. So it's five. That's pretty firm. I like the way it's pretty sturdy. Now what happens here on top, maybe I'll do the top real quick, is this. I'm not sure how I'm gonna actually mount them on there yet. I'll try to put crown side down. Which I mean, crown side, bad example here, this one's pretty flat. Uh, so is this one. I'm just picking the best sides here. This one has a pretty good size. <laughs> None of these have, here we go, here's the one with a good crown. See the crown, how, like half moons, you want that to go downward because there's a chance it could bow, bow out like that. So you go down like that. So there we go. That's the way the top's gonna look. Oh, I like the way it looks. It looks really um, smokehouse-like. I like it, pretty good. Just to kind of figure out how I'm gonna do that. I don't wanna screw into the top here, so um, a couple options there. I'm not quite sure. Oh, I could definitely go underneath there. That's probably what I'll do. Go out, flip it upside down here in a minute. I'll do it right now, actually. So let's do this. That's the way I want them to be. So, boy, I like the rustic look of this. Make sure they're lined up right next to each other. Make sure they're tight. They're pretty tight. Like I said, this is, it's gonna be a rustic look. We don't have a choice there, so. Um, this. 
Yeah, there we go. Then what I'll do is I'll just, I'll eyeball it really, I mean, I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, I guess to the front maybe a little bit, but should be about an inch of an overhang. I think you could eyeball this. And Cut that bottom one real quick. It's almost five. Uh, it's like five on this side. I think a little bit four and seven eighths on the other side. So a little bit of a gap. So I'm gonna cut it a little short. So I'll probably cut it at uh, four and three quarter width. That way it, I can hide the, the gap a little bit. Under 50 bucks, easy. I don't know what this thing came in at. A little sloppy right there. I wish it would have been a little tighter, but uh, it's too late now. So I think yeah, I might have to move it over a little bit. Yeah, it'll be all right. I'll hide it. Anyways, uh, I like the uh, I like the design a lot. Uh, I may not do anything with these screw holes and stuff. Uh, black sharpie would take care of like these screw holes here probably. So I may just take a black sharpie. But other than that, I think this thing is built like a tank. Look at that. Sharp looking. Jeez, like it. Now let's get the other one done. I got them both built. Uh, like I told you earlier in the video, I was gonna paint these again once I got them built. But honestly, that's the way they look, the, the way they are. Uh, let's see if this Sharpie works. It's kind of dead, but yeah. Just use the Sharpie, kind of clean up those holes a little bit, but. There you go. Both end tables are in. They look great. Guess how much they cost? I'm at $34 a piece. That's a $68 solution right there. Uh, I may end up spraying a thin coat of the uh, polyurethane clear satin I got, uh, just for the fact that I have some, and I might just spray the top to make sure they're nice and safe. Uh, but for the most part, uh, they look phenomenal. I didn't do any more additional touch up. I actually bought too much paint. That's part of that cost too. Uh, I didn't need that much. I needed a pint and I actually got a gallon of black stain. But that makes me uh, think about a new idea. Unfortunately, it's gonna be in the next video. That's a wrap. If you like these types of videos, give it a like. Make sure you subscribe. Please share with family and friends. 
And like I always say, I appreciate you spending time with the Home Pro Hero.